Welcome to the second part of the Spreadsheet Skunk Work series. I'm Chris from Tiger Spreadsheet Solutions and hopefully you've seen the first video and I do an introduction to the series there but just to quickly summarize the series is about trying to explore the capabilities of Excel and Excel VBA and computer programming more generally by trying to create a chess computer or at least by trying to see how close we can get to creating a chess computer. So let's get straight into the Excel file. Now, if you've just watched the first video and there's a playlist on the channel, uh, you'll see, uh, or, or, or you would have already seen, that we've done a video to create a, a chessboard. So I'm just gonna hit, hit clear board here, and now I've got a button to color the board and it creates uh, the chessboard there. So we're going to look in this video at how we can improve this code. Now I go through this code in detail in the first video, but there's certainly some scope for improving this code. And I came up with two ideas. Firstly, uh, this code here, which is the formatting code. Formatting code tends to be look quite complicated and therefore it's a little bit inefficient, particularly if you record the code using the macro recorder. And I'd like to have a more efficient way to do the formatting rather than having to execute six or seven lines of code there. Can we do it more efficiently? In addition to that, I would like to have a facility whereby the user will be able to take uh, a particular square, let's just choose this square here, and then set the formatting on that square and the formatting on that square or in this cell, the formatting in this cell would be used on the board. So we'd have a black square and a white square. The user can use the formatting uh, or we want to create a mechanism whereby the formatting can be transferred straight onto the board. Now that's a much uh, more interesting option for the user, more flexible. Uh, the user can um, choose any kind of formatting in that cell and it will be copy pasted onto the board. So we're going to see if we can do that um, in this video. So it's going to be more efficient and it's uh, more flexibility, better functionality for the user. Uh, a third thing I noticed is down towards the end of the code or throughout the code really, we're actually selecting cells. You can see in this line of code, selection.offset, uh, dot select. So we're actually selecting a cell and then doing something to a cell. Now that way of doing things, selecting a cell and then doing something to, the, to a cell is not the most efficient way to do VBA coding. It's much more efficient to do things remotely and that means getting something done to the cell without actually selecting the cell. That act of selecting the cell that slows Excel down. You know, we don't really notice it uh, in this code because it's very it's very quick. Uh, but if you're doing more sophisticated routines, then you will notice um, that change in efficiency. So three things there. We want to replace this formatting code with something more more efficient. We want to introduce some formatting cells so the user can choose the formatting for the black squares and the white squares and then introduce some kind of remote referencing uh, mechanism in VBA um, to make it all more efficient. So they're the general aims um, for this video but we're going to see how we go. The spirit of this series is to kind of not overstructure it and just to see, just to explore, explore the capabilities, see what we can learn along the way. So I'm going to start a new sub this time. You know, I, I could delete this code, but it's a good idea um, to retain, just just to retain code because you know it might be useful later. So generally speaking, it's a good idea anyway. So I'm going to retain this first routine, and then let's have a second routine. Uh, let's put it in a new module actually to make it more. Uh, visible uh, on your screen there. Okay, and let's uh, call it color board, color board uh, remote. So an informative name, an informative name for the routine. Just looking at the name of the routine, I get an idea what the routine does. So color board uh, remote. And then, yeah, we want to do this. Um, let's deal with this remote referencing, remote referencing idea first. Uh, so I want to loop through all of the cells on the board um, without selecting the cells. We're going to see if we can do that. And then we've got the idea of doing a copy paste as well. 
Um, so I know I'm going to need two variables to do this, at least two variables. I'm going to need a variable to control uh, the column position, the horizontal position, a vari variable to control the row position, the vertical position. Uh, so let's get started with two variables. Uh, so let's say dim, and then again, um, let's say call control. Again, an informative name, an informative name, an informative name for the variable is next. So call control, it gives me an idea, it's controlling columns. So we can tell from the name of the variable what the variable might do. And then row control as integer. Now these are integer variables. These are whole numbers, not going to be more than about 32,000, which is the limit for the integer variable. So integer is the appropriate, appropriate variable to use here. Okay, and then I've got to think about how we're going to loop through the board again. So let's try to loop across first and then loop down. So we're going to have a loop within a loop, two loops working together so, so that we can cover the whole board if you like. So let's use a for next loop here equals one, two, eight. Okay, there we go. Next uh, call control. There we go. Now, at this point, there's one thing I should, should have done at the beginning, but it's okay just to throw it in now. Let's put option explicit at the top of the module. Now, this is something we have to put in, um, but I recommend putting it in there. Option explicit means that Excel will check the variable names before uh, it tries to run the code. So if you made any spelling mistakes or anything in the variable names, put in option explicit, Excel will check uh, the routine before it runs it, that's a good way uh, to pick up um, common errors, you know, just misspelling variable names, things like that. So always use, always use option explicit. So we've created our first loop here and you'll notice I open the loop and then close the loop straight away so that, that, so that I don't forget to close it later on. Open the loop, close it straight away. And then let's just say loop across columns let's say begin loop across columns. So I'm putting annotations in now. You can see I've used an inverted comma, an inverted comma here. So these notes I'm making will appear in green. That means they're annotations and Excel will ignore, uh, ignore these notes when it's, when it's executing the code. So we've got our first loop in there. Okay, and then let's think about this uh, copy paste mechanism here. So I want to create two cells where the user can format these cells and then those formatting settings will be copy pasted, transferred onto the actual chessboard. So let's choose two cells and just yeah, for the purposes of this video I'm going to use cells next to the board so that we can see that. Maybe in future videos I'll shift these cells onto a supporting sheet because it's not something that the user will want to do very often. So it's sensible to shift it onto a supporting sheet somewhere out of the way where the user doesn't have to look at it all the time. But for the purposes of this video, um, let's keep them on this first sheet. And I'm going to name this cell. So let's say a black cell here. And then below, let's say white cell. Okay, there we are. So black cell. So let's have let's have some something different here in terms of the formatting. Alt H O E. Alt H O E is the window shortcut uh, to open the format uh, uh, box here. So what fill options have we got? Um, I like the pattern fills. So let's give these a go. So what if we have, okay, what, what does this look like? Okay, something like that. What if we go for black in here? Okay, yeah, so you can see I've used the patterns there and the colors to create this kind of dotted effect. And obviously you can play, play with these, um, get it looking exactly how you want to look, but that will do, you know, something a little bit different. Okay, and then let's do the same. Well, let's go for a similar effect here. Background color, white. And then let's just put, 
<coughs> excuse me let's just put some very light dots over there okay we do have some <laughs> extremely light dots and let's make those a little bit more intense touch more intense there we go maybe a there we go something like this okay so we've got our our named cell so we've given it a name black cell and white cell so we've given the both of these cells we've given names we've applied some formatting there now we want to shift that formatting um, onto the board if you like now the, yeah these it's a good idea to name these cells to give these cells name to make them named ranges that means they'll be easier to shift later on we're going to reference these cells in the code when we reference the cells we're going to use the named ranges and if we want to subsequently move these cells somewhere else it means that we won't have to revise and change the code uh, we can just shift the named range somewhere else um, in the file if you go formulas name manager we can see our named name ranges uh, showing up here if we want to subsequently edit those this is where we do that we can just hit edit and I can change the reference that means I don't have to change the VBA code much easier to put a named range in use the name use the name manager manage manage that problem uh, this way so yeah good idea to use named ranges there okay so we've got our black cell and our white cell so let's let's see if we can just copy paste I'm going to use the the index number for the sheets here let's see if we can just copy paste one of these cells uh, into the board and now I'm not too worried yet about creating the checked effects or anything like that I just want to see can we do the copy paste can we get it on the board somewhere and then once we've taken that big step we can then subsequently tweak it get it working so I'm not aiming for perfection first time just kind of working through it and then we're gonna understand what's going on tweak it and improve it uh, as we go along okay so something like this okay I'm gonna introduce another named range here I'm going to make this cell a named range. So why is this cell B2 of interest to us? Well, I'm going to use this as an anchor cell, an anchor cell to anchor the offsets we're going to use in order to color uh, this board. Now, that might not make sense yet, but it will do uh, once you see the code, once you see it all working. But we're using this cell here uh, as the top left corner of the board. In fact, wonder yeah Let, let's use cell b2 and let's call this let's call this anchor cell so again we're using an informative name in this case a named range an informative name uh, the name of the range gives us gives us a sense of what the range does so we've got anchor cell there okay so I can now reference that so anchor cell is our anchor point uh, for this offset, uh, the offset command here. So offset, I always say in my videos you would have seen elsewhere on the channel, if, if you watched other videos on the channel, um, offset is one of the most useful functions uh, in Excel, in Excel VBA, the formula and the, the VBA command because it, it allows us to position, it allows us to position a spreadsheet, consists of cells, it's all about controlling position, being able to command that grid and that allows us to get things working so offset allows us to control position and rather than offset if you want to understand in a kind of practical sense what the for, what the command is doing just think of move away from rather than offset just think of move away from so um, we're going to move away from anchor cell by the value of row control and call control there we go so we're going to go row control cells down and then call control cells across. And then we want to do a paste special. So I'm going to introduce an underscore here. Now let's create a bit more room in the screenshots. Here we go. Yeah, I'm going to introduce an underscore. So space underscore that allows me to continue uh, the line of code on, on, on the line below effectively and we want to do paste special 
and then Excel paste formats. There we go. So this is, this is a really useful piece of code to know here. So we've just got the cell reference. And in this case, I've used two variables with offsets for the cell reference, but you could use a normal cell reference, A1, for example. And then dot paste special. That's telling Excel we want to do a paste special. And then you can choose the type of paste you want to do. Here we're doing Excel paste formats. Okay, because we want the formats, we could paste the values, could paste the validation or something else. We're looking to paste the formats here. Okay, so let's see what happens here. I'm just going to set the value of row control to one for the time being. So we've just got a single loop here at the moment. I'm going to reduce this indentation just for the purposes of, 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 of the screenshot so that you can see it. And let's work through the code. Let, let's see what happens. Now, a really useful um, feature in VBA for programmers for debugging, for, understand, for un understanding code is the step into uh, tool here. So you can just click step into there, or you can use the F8 key. Now, this shows us why um, option explicit is useful. Because I've put option explicit at the top of the mo module, Excel has checked the name, the name of the variables and it's pointed out to me one of the variables is not spelled correctly. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. There we go. So call control, call control, that seems to be right. Right, I'm going to step into the code now just using the F8 key. And then you can see I've lined up the windows so I can see the Visual Basic Editor and the spreadsheet at the same time. Just hitting the F8 key, working through the lines of code. Now, let's see what happens now. So I've executed the line of code, the copy line of code, and we can see that Excel has copied the cell that we wanted it to copy. So this seems to be working well. Let's resize this a touch. There we go. So now we're going to try this, this paste line of code. So what will we, we expect to happen? Well, we know anchor cell is in B2. Anchor cell dot offset, so move away from anchor cell by the value of row control. Value of row control is one. And the value of call control, value of call control is also one. So that's going to be one row down, one column across. So I'm expecting something to happen to this cell here. Cell C3 or square A8 on our chessboard. So I can click in and then F8 key again. And there we can see our um, formatting has been pasted in there. Okay, very nice. So we're seeing the power of the loop now. So we go to eight and then Excel comes out of the loop. So this seems to be working well, seems to be a good start. It's going to save the file there. Now I have to go and check on my puppy. So I'll be back in just a second. Gouda. 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 Gouda, come here, come here. You okay, baby? Come here, come here. Come on, come on, let's go say hello. Come on, darling. Good girl, come on, darling. Okay, we're having a sleep. We're having a sleep. Oh. oh, let's go say hello. Okay, here she is. Here's my puppy. And she's just having a little sleep. I've got to, got to check up, up on her every um, 10 or 20 minutes or so. But she's doing fine. I think she wanted to be left to sleep, to be honest. She's doing okay. She's never been in this room before. So she's very excited. I'm going to go and put her back down now and then we'll do another 10 or 15 minutes then I might check on her again. Okay, darling. Okay. Okay, good girl. Good girl. Good girl. There you go. Good girl. Well done. Good girl. Good girl. There you go. Good girl. Well done. Okay. So back to the skunk works. Right. So the first part of the loop, the first loop rather, seems to be working well. Okay, we just got a single line at the top of the board there. So this is not, not quite what we're looking for because we want to color the whole board. So in order to do that, we're going to have to um, introduce a second loop. Okay, but before I do that, You'll notice when we come out of this code, I'm just going to put a, a um, 
let's just work through this code quickly so I can show you. Now you'll see that, um, yeah, Excel is in cut copy mode here. So we can see uh, the kind of flashing border that this, that this cell has. That means Excel is in cut copy mode. At the end of the routine, we want to get out of cut copy mode. And you might know how to do that when you're using Excel normally. You just hit the escape key like that. And then Excel exits, exits cut, cut copy mode and the, the flashing border has disappeared. Now we want to do that programmatically as well. Um, if the user, when they run the code, you know, um, if, if at the end of the code it comes out with the cell, the border flashing, that's not ideal. So let's put a line of code in now to ensure that that happens. If you didn't know this line of code, you could of course record the code, use the macro recorder, copy, hit the escape key, then you'll get the line of code to do it, or you could look it up on Google. The line of code is application dot cut copy mode equals false. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to say stop flashing border. Border, there we go. Okay, good. So just an important detail there that's going to improve the user friendliness uh, of the code. So let's think about this second loop. So what, how are we going to put this second loop in? Well, first let's indent the first loop. <coughs> Excuse me. Indent the first loop. That's going to allow us to understand the structure of the code and to not confuse the two loops. And then for row control equals one, two, eight. So I've opened the loop there. So what do you do when you open the loop? Close the loop straight away. So you don't get confused later. Row control, uh, next row control. There we go. Okay, an annotation here. Down rows, and then copy paste that annotation. Oops. Control C, Control V. Okay, so we've got a second loop in there now. Don't need this line of code that's setting the value of row control. That's fine because the value of row control will be set, of course, in, in this line of code, this four next line of code. Okay, so what's going to happen now? Well, I would expect, let's clear the board first. So we know what this, this chunk of code does. So this colors a row effectively. So then we'd expect Excel to go down another row. We remember the row control variable, the row control variable is controlling the row offset. So initially, when we did the first example, we set the row offset to one. Now the row offset is going to increase by one every time we go through this, this row control loop. Okay, so let's just give it a go. What I'm going to do is put a break point here. So if you left click in the margin, left click in the margin, you can see this line of code is now red and you've got a red circle in the margin. This means uh, a breakpoint has been inserted into the code. Now, when Excel gets to that breakpoint, Excel is going to stop. It's going to break the code. That means you can investigate what's going on. So another really useful debugging tool, breakpoints. So I'm just going to play the code now. We can see Excel has stopped at the breakpoint of this line of code. Row control currently equals one. And we can see, well, our anchor cell is B2. So Excel has come down one row because the value of row control, the, the variable in the offset, controlling the row offset is one. So let's play this one more time. Okay, very nice. Row control now equals two. Okay, there we go. And let's see if we get the right number of rows. Yep, so that's good. Okay, uh, well, I say that's good. But for me, you know, that, that's progress. I think it's really it's a really important point this with Excel with computer programming generally is like as long as you have things backed up, so save the file, that's a good idea, control S, save the file now, then you shouldn't worry about making mistakes and you shouldn't worry about trying to get it right first time. I never try to get it right first time. I always do a little bit steady and systematic. My first spreadsheet lecturer used to talk about working in a steady and systematic way. So just take a small chunk of the task, try to get it done, make sure you save the file, run some code, 
you know, you're not going to lose anything. If the file's saved, then it's perfectly okay to experiment, try to get a little bit done. Okay, that's, that's done. Move on to the next bit, just working through it in small chunks, steady and systematic. This is the way to do uh, computer program, programming. Okay, so we're getting close, and, but we're missing this, this, this checkerboard effect. Okay, I've got, so, I've got two ideas for how to do this. Um, at present, we're just copying this cell we've called black cell. That's the only cell we're copying. What do we, do we want to do? Well, for the first cell, we want to copy the black cell. Actually, for the first cell, we would want to copy white cell because on a chessboard, the white square is on the bottom right-hand corner, H1. So the first time we the first time this line of code is executed. This is the line of code, of course, that actually does the paste. So the first time this line of code is executed, we want it to copy paste from the white cell. The next time we want it to copy paste from the black cell, then from the white cell, then from the black cell, because as we work across, we want to go white, black, white, black, white, black. That's going to give us the checkerboard effect. So that's what we want to do. We want to alternate those copies, really, so that yeah, the first time we copy the white one and then the black one. So how might we manage that alternation uh, process? I've got a couple of ideas. Uh, one way would be to use the column and row references, uh, which is what we did in the first video. So I'll try to do it a different way this time. You know, Excel can give us uh, a column uh, a number a for, for a column or a row, you know, we can get that using a formula. We can also get that in VBA using a dot column. Yeah, so we could do it that way. Um, and that's how I did it in the first video. So if you're interested in that, go back to the first video and you can see a better explanation of that. This time I'm going to try using a variable to do this. Let's take a variable and then let's set it to one value the first time we execute this code, then let's set it to another value the second time we execute it, back to the first value the third time we execute it. So we're going to alternate between two values. Now, what kind of variable allows us to alternate between two values? You might know this already if you've been watching videos on the channel or studying VBA generally. Let's have a Boolean variable. Okay, so a Boolean variable is always true or false, which sounds really quite s simple, but incredibly useful for doing jobs like this, where we've got half the time we want to go one way, half the time we want to go another way, we want to alternate between two things, incredibly useful. So I've created a new variable here, again, informative variable name, black, white. And then what we're looking to do is alternate the cell that is that is uh, copied. So the first time we want to copy the white cell, second time we want to copy the black cell. So let's set this black white variable to true. And then if black white equals true Then, now I want to copy the white cell, else copy the black cell, and if, there we go. Yeah, the first time through, as we've already established, I want to copy paste from the white cell, not the black cell. Remember, we've got two cells in the spreadsheet here. So the first time I want to copy from the white cell because um, top left to bottom right on a chessboard is, is white square. So it makes sense. We're starting in the top left hand corner. So it makes sense to start with um, the white cell. OK, so I need to do one more thing to make this mechanism work. Remember, we've got this idea of alternation, alternating between the white cell and the black cell, copy the white cell, copy the black cell. In order to do that, I want to switch this Boolean variable to make it switch it from true to false. Every time we execute this line of code, every time we go through the call control loop, we want to switch the value of the variable. If it's true, we want to make it false. If it's false, we want to make it true. Now, there's a nice short line of code 
that we use with Boolean variables that will switch the value of the of the Boolean variable. So, so this this line of code here, the name of the variable not name of variable in brackets, I think, haven't used this much, well, we'll see, um, should switch the value of the Boolean variable. If it's true, it's going to make it false. If it's false, it's going to make it true. Now, if it's true, it's going to go to the white cell. If it's false, it's going to go to the second part of the conditional statement, which is the black cell. That means it's going to take the black cell formatting. Okay, so hopefully you're getting an understanding of how this works. If you're struggling to understand code, to understand what we're trying to do here, um, I always say try to separate, try to separate it out in your mind. Try to understand conceptually what we're trying to do, which means in English or in whatever language you speak, try to, you know, almost say it out loud what we're trying to do. You know, in this case, we're going to loop through the cells, going to loop through the rows, and then we're going to loop through the columns, and we're going to alternate the cells. Uh, coloring them black and white. So that's kind of conceptually speaking or just in a descriptive way in English that shows I'm understanding what we're actually trying to do uh, with the code. Now it's, it's very difficult to do the technical part to actually do the code if your conceptual understanding, your descriptive understanding is not there. Okay and this this for me is almost all the time um, people are struggling with code is because you know they think they're struggling with the code but they're actually struggling to get the concepts clear in their mind what are we actually trying to do you know logically speaking can you say out loud can you write down what we're trying to do so that's my tip for trying to un understand code you know don't just try to get the VBA working you know take a step back and you know can you describe what's going on can you describe what's going on in English? Once that kind of understanding is clear in your head, the technical part dealing with the coding language is going to be uh, much easier. So that's my tip for uh, you know getting better uh, working with code. So let's give this one a go. Okay, we're going to clear the board here. Now, what do we expect to happen? Okay, here we are. Black, white. Okay, so I just need an equals there. There we go. Right, so I'm hitting the F8 key, stepping through the code. Okay, so we've initialized our Boolean variable at the top there. If we didn't have this line of code, by default, I think it would be true. Anyway, yeah. So uh, not absolutely necessary, but for, for completeness, we put it in there. Okay, so black, white is true. So we're expecting the conditional statement to go to the first part. We're expecting VBA to go to the first part of the conditional statement, and there we go. So the white cell is now copied. The white cell here seems to make sense. <coughs> XL has now gone to the end of the conditional statement. Hasn't gone into the second part of the conditional statement, of course, because this is if, else, and end if. It's only going to go into one part of the conditional statement. And then we've, well, we've explained this, this line of code before using the offset command to control position and the two variables, row control variable, which controls this loop, call control variable, which controls this loop, getting these variables together to control the position on the board. And there we go, seems to, seems to work. So now this line of code should switch the value of black, white to false. That allows us to achieve this alternation effect and create the black white the checkerboard effect that we're looking for a fake key so black white is now false there we go seems to be working well f8 again so we've gone yet yeah, back to the top of this loop okay there we go seems to be working well okay now i'm interested in what's going to happen when we get to the end of the row and switch to the next one switch to the next row, how's the alternation going to work? Yes, I had a suspicion this might happen. Okay, we're going to end up with some nice stripes. So this is, you know, tantalizingly close to what we want, but at the moment looks completely wrong, you know, and it's a good example of how in programming a very small detail makes everything look completely wrong. This is something I always find on my projects. You can make the smallest mistake and you know it looks completely wrong so you've got to be very very careful uh, checking things through 
Okay, so what can we do here? You might want to stop the video here. You know, if this was your pro project, how would you tweak this code in order to offset? Although you might not use the offset command, just in English, we want to offset this coloring so that the second row is um, offset to the first one. That's, that's going to create this checkerboard effect uh, that we're looking for. Now, I think if when we work through, yeah, when we drop back into that first loop, because remember, we're working through the columns first, when we drop out of the column loop, so just here, and we go back into the row loop that's going to move us down to the next row, I think if we switch the value, the value of the variable, the Boolean variable, the variable that's controlling the black-white alternation, if we switch it here, I'm not sure, but intuitively, <laughs> intuitively, this seems to make sense to me. So we've introduced a line of code to make an additional switch, an additional alternation, and that should achieve that uh, offset effect. Okay, let's clear the board. Okay, F8 key, just working through these. There we go. First row, pretty confident about that. We've done that a few times. Okay. So we've just dropped out of the, the nested loop, the loop that's, that's, that's looping us across the columns there. We've dropped out of that loop. And now we're dropped into the row control loop. Yeah. And this additional line of code has just switched black, white back to false. If black, white is false, then we should go to the black cell. OK, looking at the conditional statement, if black, white is false, we should go to the black cell. So hopefully we're going to end up with another black cell here. That should achieve the, the alternation we're looking for, should achieve that checkerboard effect. OK, let's give it a go. Yeah, we've got black there. OK, very good. Looking good. OK, so let's stop that there. I'm going to go back to our original buttons. I'm going to reallocate the macro or allocate a new macro uh, to this button here, this color board button. So color board remote is the macro we've been working on here. It's called color board remote. I'll just demonstrate that. There we go. Color board remote is here. And yep. So right click on the button, allocate the macro we've just created uh, to that button. So clear the board and then color board. Okay, there we go. I'm, I'm quite like that effect we've created. You can see that the the dots, the dotted fill. Remember, we can do that uh, in the uh, yeah the formatting dialog box uh, using the patterns up here and the pattern style. But I quite like the, the the dotted fill. It just seems to take the edge off the colours, so they're not too bold and brash, and just makes them a little easier for the eye to kind of consume. So quite quite like the effect uh, we've uh, created there. Okay, so this is looking good. So that's as far as we're going to go in this video. So let, let's just go over the main points here. So initially we were talking about the weakness of the first macro uh, we created in, in the video one. Now, now this, this does color the board. It's absolutely fine, but there's definitely a few weaknesses here. There's inefficiencies here. So I've just, <coughs> excuse me, I've just copy pasted some code here. And, you know, we don't need eight or nine lines of code to, to do a fairly simple formatting job. So we wanted to make this more efficient. And yeah, another way of improving the efficiency is rather than selecting the cells to do things remotely. So here we are selecting the cell and then doing something, uh, doing the copy paste in the improved code. You can see we don't select the cells at any point. At no point are we selecting cells there. If we're not actually selecting the cells, Excel's not clicking on the cells itself, uh, the code is going to be, be more efficient, it's going to work faster. And finally, we wanted to introduce this mechanism whereby the user can make some changes. In fact, let's demonstrate this now. The user can format these cells however he or she wishes to format them, and then those formats will be replicated in the board once the color color board button is pressed. And there we go. Okay, let's just try another one. Alt H O E. And let's go for green. Okay, there we go. 
very nice very nice so you can see just by combining combining a you know just really two or three techniques i mean what well what, what have we got here we've got two loops working together so a loop on its own is powerful when you get two loops working together um yeah just super powerful as you can see so we've got two loops working together there the offset command to control position the offset command combined with a variable is another super powerful way to control position. In this case, we're using the offset command with two variables. Remember, these variables are increasing by one each time we go through the loop. So we've got two loops working together with this offset command to achieve the position control. And then we've got the code uh, to do the copy pasting, conditional statements. We've got that alternation mechanism, remember, which is controlled by the Boolean variable here, switching between two and true and false, depending if you want a black and black or white square. The Boolean variable combined with the conditional statement means that we are um, copying from the from the cell we want to copy from, from the white cell or from the black cell. And then finally, this line of code, paste special code, super useful. Uh, dot paste special Excel paste formats. Dot paste special Excel paste values super useful for doing uh, you know a, a precise paste um, just taking the specific uh, attributes of the cell um, that you're looking for okay there we go so hopefully uh, you've been able to learn something uh, from that video um, to be honest I haven't thought about what we're going to do next with this I mean we've got a chessboard we've got a nice mechanism for coloring the chess chessboard I think next time we might do some formatting of these numbers and these letters yeah just maybe a little a little job at the start of the next video then we're going to think about how to represent the pieces how to represent the pieces uh, on the chessboard okay before i go i'm just going to go and get get my puppy cooter again and we'll say goodbye cooter cooter hello baby you're going to say goodbye goodbye to youtube people come on come on good girl Good girl, good girl, good girl. Oh, you're sleepy. Okay, so Kuda's a little bit sleepy. Um, but yeah, hopefully um, we'll be able to see you in the next video in, in this series, Spreadsheet Skunk Works, or in another video on the channel.